So let's get into it. Hi, everybody. Official beginning, official start. My name is Jake, and I'll be your host for today's virtual event, Optimizing RNA Therapeutics. Uh, if you are here today, it is because you are making or want to make an RNA-based therapeutic. And I'm here along with the rest of the Ginkgo team because we're in the business of making that easier for you. Today, we're gonna hear all about Ginkgo's RNA therapeutic services. We're gonna cover it from both the technical perspective and the business perspective. So if I do my job right, you're gonna come away with this event with some understanding of what Ginkgo can do to advance your RNA therapeutic and what a partnership with us might look like. Here is today's agenda. First, I'm gonna introduce Ginkgo and give you the big picture on RNA services. Next, we'll meet with a member of Ginkgo's BD team to talk about what the RNA market looks like right now and how Ginkgo can help our partners meet the moment. Then comes the technical meet. We've got four short presentations from members of our technical team to show off Ginkgo's capabilities. We're talking about RNA programming with an emphasis on the circular RNA format. We're talking about RNA production and purification. We're talking about LNP screening with functional barcodes and about engineering binding domains to target LNPs to particular tissues. Then at the end, we'll open things up for some Q&A. And on that note, I'd like to call your attention to the Q&A button, which is somewhere at the bottom of your Zoom window. So that, that Q&A feature is live. You can type your question in there at any time during today's presentation. We've got folks here from both the technical and the business side. So any question at all is welcome, and we will be busily answering them behind the scenes. So if somebody shows up on camera and it seems like they're not paying attention, that's why it's because they're because they're they're busily answering your questions. All right. And so with that, let's get started. Clear my mind, clear my mind, focus, thinking about RNA. Everyone with an RNA product in the pipeline shares a few simple concerns. You're thinking, how am I going to be fast to market? And you're thinking, how am I going to be best in class? Now, beyond that, you are, no doubt, facing some challenges that are extremely specific to your application, because RNA is a very versatile molecule. We work with different types of RNA, different routes of delivery, different mechanisms of action, and of course, many different diseases being targeted. And that versatility of RNA can be both a blessing and a curse, because sequence space is infinite. You can tweak and optimize a piece of RNA forever, but that means that it doesn't get to patients. On the other hand, we know that small sequence changes can have big functional consequences. One base pair absolutely can make the difference between a fantastic treatment and something that doesn't advance in clinical trials. So what I'm gonna to argue today is that it's that sequence specificity is what unites RNA therapeutics and makes it useful to consider them collectively, despite all the different ways that we can get them to patients and all the different things that they can do when they get there. And that is where Ginkgo's RNA services come in. We offer RNA sequence discovery. We can screen large sequence spaces to find the functional elements that you need in a specific therapeutic context. We also have pre-screened and off-the-shelf sequences that might already be what you're looking for. We can circularize RNA, and most notably here, we have the proprietary technology for this that we've recently acquired from Circularis, but we're flexible there too. We offer a variety of techniques for getting those RNAs circled up. Catalytic introns, hairpin ribozymes, enzymatic ligation. Circular RNAs can offer significant advantages, particularly in terms of stability and immunogenicity, but only if you can target them to the right tissue types and manufacture and purify them as well as traditional mRNAs. So we offer services in that department too. And finally, we can help you get your RNA product where it needs to go. 
We can help you screen LNPs, lipid nanoparticles, to identify the packaging to deliver your RNA correctly. Or we can engineer binders, for example, antibodies, that will help your LNPs find the correct cell and tissue types. So the idea here is to be end-to-end. -end. We want to be your RNA services supermarket. It's the place that sells everything that you need. And we think that this is the right way to do RNA because developing an RNA therapeutic is a problem in integrated programming. RNA is programmable. So the central challenge of any RNA drug is dialing in the right sequence. It's not the only challenge. It's not the only challenge. You've got to manufacture it, package it, and deliver it. But it is the central challenge. And that's because all that other stuff provides the context and the constraints for iterating on the design of the RNA molecule. We don't write RNA by itself. We write it for a particular method of delivery and a particular mechanism of action. So it doesn't make sense to separate the sequence design from the rest of the process. RNA is integrated, RNA is programmable, and those two features put optimizing RNA therapeutics right in Ginkgo's wheelhouse. So it's end-to-end -end biotech R&D, biological programming is what we do. So let's talk about Ginkgo. We are over 1,200 people. We're based in Boston. We have offices in California, France, Netherlands, Switzerland. And if you come to visit our headquarters, you'll see a lot of robotics and automation. That's our foundry platform. Between the technology investments and the physical scale, we've invested almost half a billion dollars in building out this foundry. And we didn't do it so that we could develop our own therapeutics or our own RNA products. We did it for you so that we can partner with you to make those products. So we're capitalized to scale, and that makes now a good time to partner with us. In the past couple of years, we've moved into the biopharma space in a big way. And so one sign that you can look to there is in our leadership. Uh, Ari Beldegrun and Reshma Kowal Romani uh, recently joined our board, both of them absolute superstars in the space. Ari is the executive chairman at Allogene Therapeutics, clinical stage CAR-T. Uh, Reshma, CEO of Vertex, formerly CMO at Vertex, incredibly successful in advancing therapeutics, uh, notably in cystic, cystic fibrosis. A good way to think about our business model is we're a CRO. You can send us your R&D projects on a contract basis. So if you need more, you spend more, and if you need less, you spend less. But we're more than a traditional CRO in the sense that you can come to us and get things that you can't get anywhere else. This is a model that people are responding to. So here I've got a non-exhaustive list slide summarizing some of our partnerships in just the biopharma space. We work with the big players, the household names. We also work with smaller startups, the next generation of household names. Uh, so we've had plenty of opportunities to get to know the customers in the space and refine our offering. What is it that makes a Merck or a Moderna or a Biogen want to partner with Ginkgo? Well, I'm glad you asked because I have here the short list of reasons. More data per dollar, okay? Ginkgo's foundry is built at scale and that unlocks economies of scale. We have the automation platform to just do more experiments. Access to more data, your design shouldn't have to be limited to just the data that you can generate in-house. At Ginkgo, we have a huge library of data and the experts who know how to use it. You can launch work fast. Even if you wanted to build out your own R&D platform, building it from scratch takes months and months. With Ginkgo, you get the automation that's ready to go on the first day. Save CapEx. You don't have to invest millions of dollars in specialized infrastructure that you may or may not need in a couple of years. Uh, Ginkgo has already made those investments. And then finally, replaced fixed costs with variable costs. So this is a big one. When you think about the life cycle of a typical R&D project, you've got a huge investment at the beginning of the project when you do your early stage R&D. 
Then you go into the clinic and all of a sudden you need much less spending in that area. So all the infrastructure that you built, the whole team, maybe you have to lay them off while you focus on the clinic. And then your clinical trials are successful, of course. You want to expand your platform. So now you need to grow that spending again. It really doesn't make sense. With Ginkgo, you can access as much scale as you need during those early stages, then just turn it off. If you need it again in the future, turn it back on. Okay. Last thing that Ginkgo brings to the table is our proprietary tech. So we want to be the CRO with the in-house tech stack that you can't get anywhere else. And in the RNA space, it is the acquisition of Circularis that brings some of that special sauce for circular RNA that we are bringing to the RNA market. All right. And with that, uh, let's talk about the current state of the RNA market. I'm joined today by Sarit Schwartz. Sarit leads Ginkgo's BD team for RNA discovery. She holds a PhD in biochemistry and molecular biology from Hebrew University. She's worked at a research fellow at Memorial Sloan Kettering, at the deep learning company Atomwise, and at Abdactive Biotechnologies, which is an immune-driven medicine company. Uh, welcome, welcome, Sarit. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hi, thanks so much for being here. It's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> Sarit, uh, Let's talk RNA. Let's talk about, tell me about, tell me about the RNA space. What's going on with RNA? What are the challenges? What are the opportunities today? So we have all seen the impact and value of RNA-based vaccines. This is just the beginning. RNA-based therapeutics and vaccines have the potential to revolutionize medicine and offer treatment of a wide range of diseases and applications including targeting the undruggable. A report from ARK Investment Management that came in the beginning of the year showed a tenfold increase in annual RNA patents that were granted in the past 20 years. The number of RNA-based therapies in clinical pipeline has increased more than fivefold. Importantly, RNA-based showed lower cost and improved time to market, and CAS reported a significant increase in investment into RNA therapeutic since 2020. So there is definitely an excitement. However, therapeutic application of RNA technologies have some challenges, such as immunogenicity, specificity, expression, limited stability, and production. We'll discuss today how we tackle those challenges using the Ginkgo platform. All right, very cool, very cool. Okay, so I'm gonna play the voice of the customer in this conversation. I recognize these challenges. I know these challenges. I have these challenges. What can Ginkgo do for me that I can't get elsewhere? So I think there are multiple ways in which Ginkgo is differentiated in this area. First, our customer get access to our scale. Just to give you a sense of the economics of scale that the foundry unlocks. We have a library of thousands of UTRs and we can mine for many more from our proprietary database and from public ones. We also have 40,000 irises in pool screen in multiple cell lines. We have proprietary unique iris sequences and we are developing proprietary methods for circularizing RNA as well. We are happy to discuss our IP strategy under an NDA. Next, our scale. Our scale allows us to test multiple hypotheses at the same time, therefore de-risking the discovery process. Just to give you a flavor, we have a modular circular RNA platform, and we can use different approaches to circularize the RNA, tailored to specific applications that you may be thinking about. The ability to develop and test multiple RNAs designs at the same time while working on production in parallel, de-risk your program while maintaining a reasonable turnaround time. Now, it's best to see the scale with your own eyes. And I'm officially welcoming everyone to take a tour of our facility at Ginkgo. So you can see our state-of-the-art automation and capabilities. 
we think it's important that people come see what we are working with. We have noticed that once people see what we can do, they start dreaming big. <laughs> all right, all right. So I have, I have been on the tour. I have been on the tour. It is good. I am dreaming big. What kind of a big dream is a ginkgo dream? Tell me about the kinds of RNA therapeutic projects that are going to be well suited for Ginkgo's platform. In general, any challenge that can benefit from large scale system level approaches to studying genetic design is an excellent fit for our platform. Importantly, we are not only designing at large scale, we also physically build our design and test them in a wet lab with high throughput in the relevant setting. When thinking about direct RNA therapeutics, such as mRNA or circular RNA, it includes at minimum three components, the delivery vehicle, LNP or others, the RNA design and the payload. We can tackle challenges across all three of those areas. So when, we can, when thinking about the LNP, the vehicle, we can tackle challenges such as tissue specificity and immunogenicity using our scale. The RNA molecule, we address solid challenges such as stability, expression, tissue specificity, immunogenicity, and production. And we are able to develop these capabilities quickly because of the years of experience on our team, as well as the scale that Ginkgo is able to leverage. Finally, the payload. We can optimize for payload expression using recording strategies, as well as other considerations. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm convinced. I'm convinced. I'm the, that I'm voice of the customer. I'm convinced, and I'm ready to take the next step. Okay. Let's say I've never been in contact with Ginkgo before, and I want to. I want to get started. Tell me more about what a what a partnership from Ginkgo looks with Ginkgo looks like. So our approach is to allow science to guide our way. So first, we need to understand our partner needs. When we, once we understand the, the gaps, we put together a high-level project scope, how to tackle those gaps, how to tackle, how to address our partner needs. That allows us to understand the cost and timeline and essentially to discuss the deal structure. The de details of the deal structure, the IP and our commercial economics will depend on the technical scope. But in general, we are result-oriented. That is very important. Also, once we enter a partnership, we'll have a dedicated team that includes the project lead and an alliance manager who will think about the project day in and day out. If you want to work with us, if you want to talk with us, or if you just want to come to see Ginkgo, you can connect with us via our website, ginkgobiowork.com, via email at rna at ginkgobioworks.com, or you can also leave a message on LinkedIn and we'll get back to you. Great, great. Um, okay, Sarit, can I can I be skeptical? Can I be skeptical for a minute? Can I ask a tough question? I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I know we're we want to look good today, but I, we're, we're skeptical here. We're scientists. Does Ginkgo have credibility in RNA? Are we are we players in this space? Are we serious? Are we real? Are we real biopharma partners? Can you give examples of Ginkgo's partnerships in the biopharma space? Great question. We are working across the industry, all the way from small startup companies to partnership with large pharma. We are active in the RNA space, and we have disclosed partnerships with three startup companies, Procurium, Esperovax, and Sensible. I would love to share with you some thoughts we have heard from Procurium recently, specifically the quick turnaround and the saving on CapEx. So Kristen Albright, who is a Procarium CEO, mentioned, our team at Procarium is now dedicated to driving our lead program into clinical trials this year, while leveraging this partnership to accelerate our discovery work. We also work with large pharma companies, with Biogen in the context of gene therapy. Alfonso Galdes mentioned Ginkgo's unique combination of cell programming, expertise, proprietary tools, and knowledge of biologic system makes them an ideal co collaboration partner. 
we work with Nova Nordis focusing on the biologic space with Merck in the context of biocatalysis. And recently our work with Synlogic has progressed to the clinic where the medicine we help to develop are in phase one. And also importantly, we work all the way and to, we work end to end and from drug discovery project to production and process optimization. So Reed, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Remind us, remind us again, how do we get in touch? So you can connect us through our website, email us through rna at ginkgobioworks.com, and you can also leave a message on LinkedIn. We are really looking forward to hearing from you. All right. All right. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, so I'm in, I'm in, I'm convinced I'm getting into the RNA business now. Uh, but coming up next, we're going to look under the hood and do a deep dive on some of the ginkgo capabilities that actually make the RNA business work. Uh, and for this, I am joined by Catherine, Catherine Cifuentes Rojas. Catherine has a PhD in genetics from Texas A&M University. She's worked as a postdoc at Harvard Medical School and Mass General. Uh, she focused on circular RNA technologies at La Ronde prior to joining Ginkgo, where she currently leads the RNA therapeutics programs. Uh, welcome, welcome, Catherine. Hi, Jake. Uh, Hello. Pedro, and happy to be here. All right. So tell us about RNA therapeutics at Ginkgo. Um, let's talk about RNA programming at Ginkgo. Um, Ginkgo explores different RNA modalities to increase the probability of success of a specific application. We can use extensive digital platform infrastructure at Ginkgo to perform a head-to-head -head comparison of mRNA versus circular RNA um, within a specific program and for a specific payload. We focus our efforts on developing the technology to address specific challenges within the So how do we address a specific question at Ginkgo? Going back to the circular versus mRNA comparison example, focusing on addressing improved stability, durability, as well as aiming to decrease immunogenicity, to increase expression level and tissue specificity, this is a very complex and integrated, pro integrated problem. Like I said before, RNA programming at Ginkgo comprises an integrated strategy. We start by taking advantage of our digital capabilities to design RNAs, Circular or non uh, circular or linear will let science to guide us here. We focus on fine tuning current usage, secondary and tertiary structure, uh, as well as additional translational elements, and the possibility of including modified or not modified nucleotides if needed, with the ultimate goal of engineering the best RNA for the for the particular application. We apply integ integrative thinking to solve a complex problem. In the context of circular RNA, we'll deploy different circularization technologies and focus in the one that can bring the product to the market. And of course, we couple these strategies with a manufacturing and purification pipeline tailored to the specific needs, in vitro screening versus um, testing in, circular, uh, in, in animal models. Uh, Ginkgo has developed a toolbox to generate circular RNAs, including self-splicing, enzymatic ligation, and spliceosome-mediated circularization. Circularization is a very powerful technology, and here is data. This is an in vitro experiment where cells were transfected with different RNAs, including one capped, modified, and polyadelinated RNA, and three different circular RNA designs. Protein expression was monitored at different points after transfection, and we observe a stable expression of circular RNA five days after transfection of a protein whose half-life is a few minutes. So this allows uh, to make statements about circular RNA stability. Notably, there are at least three orders of magnitude difference in expression at day five when comparing circular RNA versus mRNA here in red, arguing that circular RNA is more stable than its mRNA counterpart for the same payload expression. And these differences in expression at different time points can be leveraged for a particular application and, and Ginkgo is in a position to improve the RNA species that best performs 
for a specific application and deployed our capabilities as needed. Now, in the next slide, an important aspect of protein expression for a monocleic acid is the level of expression that can be achieved for a specific payload. So taking advantage of Ginkgo's platform to develop the technology to identify characteristics that produce a wide range of translational levels, we have designed hundreds of synthetic and synthetic iris elements to test their ability to drive translation. We screened the library and identified several new iris sequences and structures of different sizes with diverse range of expression levels. And here we have, have, have highlighted some of the usual suspects, iris from CBB3, virus, EMCB, and polio. So you can see how Ginkgo's iris sequences perform compared to this. We can take advantage of the diverse structure range of expression levels to dial the expression in a certain sequence RNA structure and sequence context and tailor the RNA design to best perform in a specific setting or need and tailored to a specific applications. For example, in the next slide, we can take advantage of differences in expression across different cell lines to choose or engineer a construct with added layers of tissue specificity. Here, we have a plot correlating expression levels across two lines of different tissue origin. We have identified sequences that perform similarly across these cell lines. So here in orange, and also some sequences that drive expression differently from these two cell lines here in uh, red and blue. Thus, in principle, this type of screening allows us to identify iris sequences that drive translation in a, in a sequence and a tissue-specific manner. Even more, in the next slide, we also uh, have the possibility of engineering circular RNA containing sequence or structural elements that influence translation in a way that allows a certain level of expression control. This, in principle, can be deployed towards achieving tissue-specific expression. Here at the bottom, we can see how the presence in green or the absence in red of an additional sequence can increase translation when compared to constructs which the sequence is absent. Um, and at the top, we have data showing the influence of a structural motif on translation levels, again, in green versus red. So this let us choose the appropriate motif for the sequence need a uh, uh, needed application. And then the next step is to assess all this tissue specificity in an in vivo model. All right. So Catherine has shown us how Ginkgo can help you design new RNA therapeutics. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Let you in on a secret, folks. Perfect design can't get to patients unless you can also manufacture it. And fortunately, Ginkgo can help you there too. And to learn more about this, we turn to Luis. Uh, Luis Ramirez Tapia received a PhD in molecular and cellular biology from the University of Massachusetts Amherst. Uh, he has long experience working with RNA polymerase as well as nucleic acid analytics. At Ginkgo, he's a, a senior mammalian engineer on the mammalian team, which focuses on developing circular and linear RNA technologies for therapeutics. Welcome, Luis. Thank you very much, Jake. It's very nice to be here. Now, let me start by highlighting what we're looking for from the production of RNA molecules. We want to characterize the biochemical properties of the circular RNA. We want to generate the highest quality of RNA at the highest possible purity. And we know that our customers are looking for this versatility. At Ginkgo, we're able to provide a wide variety of samples at high purity at several scales. Now, the challenge that we face in the circular RNA field is that most of the RNA production and purification technologies are built with the linear RNA in mind. At Ginkgo, we have improved our existing technologies to deliver to our customers the best quality of RNA possible. Now, let's talk about how we characterize circular RNA and how to separate it from linear RNA. When we use classic molecular biology tools, we can locate like RNA in a gel or doing nuclei challenge assays. Now, suppose we start using a standard gel electrophoresis. In this case, we will see that in terms of molecular weight, there is no much difference between a linear precursor or its linear form. 
as shown in the linear control in the first two lanes versus the third and the fourth lane in this year. Now, the third and the fourth lane have circular RNA. If we challenge this IBTs with an RNAs R, an enzyme that degrades primary linear RNA, we can find where the population of circular, circular RNA is located in the gel. In this case, it's in the lower part of the major band in the last two lanes of the gel. Now, this is a good result, but has little quantitative power. A more over is not a perfect assay. You can see that there is still RNA or linear RNA that is not degraded. Now, at Ginkgo, we're developing much better methods to identify circular RNA. We use capillary electrophoresis to characterize our RNA molecules in production. In the top chrome electrophenogram, we can locate where the linear species are from an IBT that contains a mutated intron that will not generate circular RNA. In the lower electrophenogram, you can see that around minute 18, there is a significant peak corresponding to the circular RNA population. Now, not only can we distinguish clearly between the linear RNA forms and the circular forms, it also gives us a quantitative approach to finding the degree of circularization of our molecules. And because this is a high throughput method, it will accelerate our search for optimized intron irises for the large libraries that we're generating for all pharma partners. Now, we're talking about pharma applications. And we know how critical the RNA purity is. Current RNA purification capabilities across the industry has been focused in the linear form, the mRNA vaccines. These methods translate poorly when we apply directly to circular RNA purification. However, we are developing FPFC techniques to develop high purity of circular RNA at milligram scale, or alternatively, we also can do a high tropo purification, the microRNA scale with the HPLCs in the foundry at Ginkgo. On the left side, we show a typical FPLC chromatogram for a preparative purification where particular fractions are enriched for circular RNA. That will be the top band. We can calculate that we have about 12% of recovery from circular RNA with a purity of 80% in the best fraction of this method. Moreover, with HPLC methodologies, we can reach 85% of purity at microgram scale as shown in the ideal chromatogram. Well, this trace shows the locations of linear populations and the circular RNA. And we know that depending on the constant, we can reach up to 90% of purity with these results. And not only that, we validate these quantifications with LC methodologies or orthogonal methods as QPCR as shown in this graph. Well, we are really happy with the current levels of enrichment of our circular RNA, and we are still pushing the methods to increase the higher yields and higher possible purity possible. Not only that, we will keep continuing developing more analytical tools to validate these measurements in vitro and in vivo. In summary, we are developing a state-of-the-art methodologies to characterize and maximize the purity of circular RNA. Thank you, Jake. All right, thank you. Thank you so much, Luis. So we've got, we've got Catherine's team designing our RNA, and we've got Luis's team producing it. Next up, we've got to package it. We've got to package it for delivery. And in this case, by using LNPs. So for this topic, we turn to Amr Abdin. Uh, Amr received his PhD in material science from the University of Illinois, Urbana-Champaign. His background is in biomaterials and non-viral delivery tech. He's part of the mammalian engineering team here at Ginkgo. Welcome, Amr. Thank you. Um, I'm excited to tell you about how we can help with screening for new non-viral delivery methods. So LNPs have had a lot of success recently as a delivery mechanism for therapeutics. There's been a lot of interest in optimizing and characterizing LNPs as a non-viral delivery method. However, designing effective LNPs isn't easy. Um, first of all, it's an inherently in vivo problem. Both the cells and the LNPs themselves look and behave differently in vivo. So there's really no good way, uh, no good substitute for in vivo work. Second, LNP screening needs to be done in high throughput because LNPs are complicated uh, and represent such a large design space. And third, LNPs require functional characterization that's often technically challenging. And by this, I mean that the spatial location of an LNP where it gets delivered doesn't necessarily mean that the payload is functional. We need to confirm functionality. We also need 
complex assays to check other physiological effects of the LMP, for example, um, immunogenicity. And the Genko platform is well placed to address these challenges. Genko routinely generates and tests large libraries where both delivery and functional expression are measured and deconvoluted. Um, if you want to do LMP discovery that's both high throughput and in vivo, you have to do it pooled. And at Ginkgo, that means designing um, LMPs on barcodes in an array format, formulating them, and then pooling them for in vivo injection. A key challenge for a pool screen like this is tracking both the biodistribution and functional expression um, of each formulation. In a conventional approach, the DNA barcodes can be used to track you know, only the delivery of the LMPs where they end up. But the delivery of an LMP payload doesn't necessarily mean that it's functional. For example, it could be sticking to the surface of the cell and not internalized, or an LMP might enter the cell but not escape the endosome or release its cargo. So unless you're also tracking function, you can end up with particles that deliver but don't work. So how can Ginkgo track both the delivery and functional expression of a DNA construct? We use a technology called functional barcoding adapted to the circular format. And on a technical level, this comprises a DNA payload that expresses and self-cleaves making circular RNA. And because both the DNA and the RNA are barcoded, we can sequence both to separately track both the delivery and the function. The presence of the DNA barcode indicates delivery and the RNA barcode tracks expression. So you can get a readout of how much you can, how much expression you get from each construct, each delivered construct. And this technology is useful, for example, in screening promoter libraries. When you want to know how much expression you can get from a particular promoter in a particular tissue, you need to know how much DNA was delivered to for that promoter and how much expression came out of that DNA. And here on this slide is an example from one, one such screen where the expression from different promoters is profiled across different tissues. Looking at this plot, some of the promoters in the dark green, um, they're highly expressed in the lung, but detargent deliver, they're lower than control uh, in the liver. Analogously, we can use the same method to characterize both by distribution and functional expression from different LNPs across relevant organ systems or cell types. For example, detargeting the liver is often an important part of developing some of these non-viral gene therapies. And that's how we design and make the best barcoded cargo for LMP screening. But I'd like to also to briefly mention some of our other capabilities that can support LMP screening. We can do high throughput immune characterization assays that allow profiling and screening for immune response. And we have groups of assays that can characterize the innate and adaptive immune response to particles. In addition, we can characterize the immune response to the payload itself. So for example, we have antigen cross-presentation assays that can help characterize immune response to vaccine payloads. We're also very good at high throughput liquid handling and can use that to generate LNPs. The standard method for generating LNPs is microfluidic mixing, but it's slow and hard to scale. And by using liquid handlers for mechanical mixing, we can really explore much more of the LNP design space. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Amr. Now, for the last technical session of the day, we're gonna hear about how Ginkgo can help you target these LNPs to the right cells and tissue. So this is a cutting edge topic, really pushing the boundaries of what LNPs are capable of. So naturally, I had to get Adam Meyer. Adam received a PhD in chemical biology and drug discovery from the University of Texas at Austin. He is the head of selections and strain improvement team at Ginkgo, which focuses on directed evolution and multiplex assays. Adam, thank you so much for being here. Hey, thanks, buddy. All right, uh, hello, everybody. I will be introducing some of Ginkgo's binder capabilities. Uh, we offer several different services to discover, optimize, and characterize binders. And those binders can then be used to target the RNA to the correct tissue type. First, we develop binding proteins, think IgGs, SCFBs, nanobodies, etc., against the tissue-specific receptors. We can then conjugate these binders either to the RNA molecules directly or to the lip or to the RNA-bearing lipid nanoparticles. This targets the RNA to the correct tissue type, thus improving on-target delivery, reducing off-target effects, and reducing the required dose. Ginkgo has a bunch of services that can be applied to the discovery, optimization, and characterization of binders. And we are super excited to work with you to decide which is the optimal approach for your specific needs. We have extensive experience in designing and building large libraries. These range from fully synthetic nanobody libraries to semi-synthetic SCFB libraries inspired by natural diversity, 
to structure and machine learning guided variants on an existing binder. We can deploy phage display and or yeast display to enrich for target specific binders, starting from libraries of millions to billions of variants. Our BindSeq service is used to measure the affinity of thousands of binders in parallel, and I'll detail that in just a minute. I'll also describe our encapsulation and screening platform, which we use in selections for secreted binders. And once we've used one of the above approaches to discover or improve a binder, our protein purification and characterization team can purify and perform detailed characterization of hundreds or thousands of lead variants and then scale up the purification of the best ones. One service I'd like to highlight is BindSeq, which can be used to determine the KD for thousands of binder variants in parallel. A library of binders in yeast surface display format is exposed to a fluorescently labeled target molecule at a range of concentrations. The highest affinity binders, like the blue one shown, will light up at lower concentrations, while the lowest affinity binders, like the orange one shown, will only light up at the highest concentrations. For each concentration of target, we use fluorescence activated cell sorting to sort each population into bins based on the degree of binding. We then deep sequence each bin so that we can infer how much each variant is binding the target at that concentration. Combining the data from all the target concentrations lets us determine the KD of each variant. So ultimately, we end up with an enormous data set that can be used to deliver a binder with specific properties and or train a model to inform future designs. Another service I'm super excited about use, utilizes our encapsulation and screening platform to select for secreted binders. On the left, we start by encapsulating a library of binder secreting producer cells such that each variant ends up in its own alginate bead or nanoliter reactor. That nanoliter reactor also contains a nanoparticle labeled with the target receptor. In the middle panel, the producer cell secretes its binders, which are small enough to diffuse out of the nanoliter reactor, unless they bind to the target on a nanoparticle and get stuck there. On the right, the captured binder is then labeled with a fluorescent secondary antibody. Ultimately, the nanoliter reactor with the best binders end up being the most fluorescent, and those can be isolated using a large particle flow cytometer. This encapsulation-based approach has several unique advantages. First, we are able to simultaneously select for the secretion titer and binding affinity. Second, if we replace the nanoparticle in this example with a cell line, then we co-encapsulate that cell line with the library, then we can select four binders that are insoluble or otherwise difficult. Finally, co-encapsulating with a reporter cell line allows us to select for a phenotypic response in the target cell. Uh, these are just some of the services that we have at Ginkgo in this space. And again, please do reach out to us and work with us to find the optimal approach for your specific needs. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you so much, Adam. Binders. Binders. I love it. I love it. Uh, and with that, we will conclude the technical section of our presentation. Uh, and we will begin the Q&A. The Q&A. So for this, I will once again call your attention to the Q&A button on the bottom of your Zoom window. Uh, you can type any question in there, anything at all, and we will do our best to get you an answer. And I know that we have been busily answering uh, some questions live uh, uh, via text during this event. Uh, I am going to now, I've got my producers here uh, on my earpiece uh, informing me of the most, the some questions that we want to answer live. Okay, I've got one. I have a live answering question. Are we ready? Are we ready for this team? This is real. This is real show business. This is real show business. Question is: Can you do combinatorial screening of mRNA uh, uh, in vivo? Combinatorial screening of mRNA in vivo. Uh, Catherine, I think is that a question for you? Yes. Um, and uh, thank you for asking that that question. Uh, uh, I think is very interesting, and uh, we uh, it is definitely within our realm of possibilities to do this in, in the mouse. Um, of course, we will add a um, step of uh, in vitro screening and 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 select uh, the best conditions, and and we'll definitely will be able to do a combinatorial combinatorial screen uh, in the mouse. Okay. 
Okay, very cool. Uh, I've got another question here. Do we have do we have in vivo data? Do we have in vivo data that we are ready to share at this time? Uh, Sarit, I think maybe that's that's a question for you. Yes, um, so we are currently running an in vivo experiment and we are expecting to have data to be able to share in May. Uh, we also have access to an animal facility. And that means that during our partnership, we don't need to wait until the end of the program to test in vivo. Instead, we can test in vivo in parallel. And that can help us to shorten the timeline for preclinical studies. Okay, okay, that sounds good. So we've got some in vivo data coming up here. I am uh, I'm scanning these these uh, these live questions to see what we can answer live. So here, this is another technical one that seems uh, pretty interesting. Uh, you mentioned modified, for example, N one methyl pseudouridine circ RNA. Uh, nuclear mo nucleotide modifications are known to interfere with IRES function. Do you have IRESs that are functional when fully modified? So I, I see, uh, thank you for this question. Uh, I see the answer to this question like two ways. One, uh, we, in principle, we can perform the same screen that you just saw with not, uh, non modified nucleotides in the context of a uh, modified nucleotide. And as Sarit mentioned earlier in the talk, we have access to a library that is uh, somewhere in the 40K uh, members that we can uh, do, that, that we can perform this screening. Uh, but there is also the possibility of getting around the modification in the iris of a circular RNA construct that has been modified. And we, uh, it is within our capabilities to do this. So we can have a partially modified circle, a full modified circle, or a non-modified circle. All right, thank you for that. Thank you. Okay, I've got a question here. This one's on the, this was on, on the, comes on the business side. This one, pretty straightforward. This one, really direct and to the point, after my own heart. Uh, what is your timeline and cost? How long does it take? How much does it cost? Uh, people want to know. Uh, what can we What can we say about this, Sarit? Yeah. So each of our program is a bespoke project tailored to the specific needs of our partner. Therefore, each has its own timeline and cost. So the way that we do it is that we're going to have a conversation with our partner about your, uh, the partner program objective, the budget, and the timeline. And that will allow us essentially to design and plan to address the specific need that you have in the context of your uh, specific project. All right, all right, on the business side. Hard to hard to do price and timeline for these these quite bespoke uh, RNA therapeutics projects. Um, I'm seeing another technical question here. This one is uh, interesting to me. Um, probably this one will go to you again, Catherine. Uh, I was wondering if you also have experience in improving spliceosome derived circ RNAs, non synthetic. I love this question because we do have. And uh, we have a, a, a extensive amount of, of data uh, from splices of mediated circularization. And we have identified several constructs that uh, work uh, really well in this system in different cell lines. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, okay, another one, similar, similar topic. Can circular RNA technology be used to augment protein production in CHO cells? Definitely. In theory, um, we can perform the screen. And since there are two ways of answering this question. One, first, we will perform a screen in uh, the specific cell line for the specific payload and choose the higher performers. But also, if you think about stability of the circular RNA construct and you add this to the increase or, or dependency on the half-life of the protein, you can build a higher levels of, of expression for a certain amount of time. This will also be ligated to uh, how long you are expressing or, or, or uh, we will uh, modify the system to improve expression in, in uh, and CHO cells are, are, are now this, not exception to this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, 
Now I see, okay, I've got a question here. This is on the production side. Uh, what do you define as high quality RNA, mRNA or circ RNA? And what does your QC process look like? Is that one for you, Luis? Yes, that's for me. So we have a, a process where we are trying to maximize the purity of the circular RNA. Anything over 90% will be the best state of the art methodology. In terms of QC, we're testing for endotoxins or immunoreactivity, double strand RNA. It is typical for um, mRNA molecules, either linear or circular. All right. All right. That's on the production side. Let me do a quick scan here. I think we've got it. We've done a pretty good job of answering these questions live or, or in the text. Uh, and so I think in the interest of time, uh, the time has come for us to wrap up this virtual event. Uh, thank you so much, everyone out there for joining us. Uh, let's, let's review, let's recap. Let's do some highlights and, uh, and some, some takeaway messages. Uh, RNA is programmable. That's why we love it here at Ginkgo. RNA therapeutics, they need integrated R&D. So we brought the full stack into the foundry. We're here for your RNA sequence discovery, circularization, manufacturing, purification, LNP screening, binder engineering. Thanks so much to our technical team who came out today, Catherine, Luis, Amar, and Adam. These are incredibly smart people. Do these people know RNA or what? Or what? Yes. Uh, today's call to action is RNA, RNA at GinkgoBioWorks.com. This virtual event brought to you by RNA at GinkgoBioWorks.com. Special thanks to Sarit Schwartz, our BD lead for RNA. When you're ready to get on the foundry, operators are standing by, put that half a billion dollars worth of Ginkgo Foundry infrastructure to work on your strain. Final point, after this Zoom call ends, you'll get linked to a survey. That is the easiest way to let us know how to follow up with you. So let us know if you're ready to start the conversation. Somebody from Ginkgo will reach out. And until next time, as we like to say around here at Ginkgo Bioworks, let's grow. Bye, everybody. Okay, for this event, thinking about what to do, I decided I was going to talk about a very funny meme that I made about RNA. Okay, very funny meme. I'm what you'd call a very online person. I love a good meme. I made this one myself. Okay, so you see you've got buff Shiba Inu over there. That's DNA. DNA, very reliable, very easy to work with. But then this other dog, that's RNA, very uncooperative, very hard to work with. Okay, obviously, this is a great meme. Big hit, big hit on Twitter. But then just last week, just last week, something happened that's actually even more important than a funny meme that I made, which is that Ginkgo hosted our annual conference, the Ginkgo Ferment. And this is Ginkgo's biggest event of the year, where we bring together a big part of the synthetic biology community, we celebrate our customers, we roll out our new foundry services, and you can check it out at ginkgoferment.com. There's a lot of good stuff in there. Uh, but since today's topic is RNA, I'm thinking in particular about a uh, fireside chat that we featured with John Mariganeri. And so people on this call, you probably know who that is. John's the former CEO of Alnylam, a major force for bringing RNAi to the market as a new modality. And I'm somewhat familiar with the history of RNAi, but to hear John tell it, you can really just feel the incredible resilience that it took to bring RNAi to the market. He gave the famous George Bernard Shaw quote, the unreasonable man adapts himself to the world. The un oh, sorry, the reasonable man adapts himself to the world. Unreasonable man persists in trying to adapt the world to himself. Therefore, all progress depends on the unreasonable man. And I just thought, wow, wow, we really, really need to make biology easier to engineer. Because I think there's a lot of John Mariganeries out there who are fighting like hell to bring new modalities into the clinic. And if Ginkgo can make biology easier to engineer, we can make their work a little easier and they deserve it because this is not an easy business. All right.